question? Well, I think for all of us as parents, I know for myself, as a little girl, all I could dream about was being a mom. I know, um, I think all of us do that. And on May 26th of 1987, that dream came true. And as Darren shared, Garrison grew up a normal little boy, just like everybody, all the other boys here. And he loved baseball, football, skateboarding, many different things. But when he entered his freshman year, he tried out for the baseball team. And he and several of his friends tried out for the baseball team and they, they were rejected. They didn't make the team. We live in Kansas City and not everybody makes the team. So that was my first knowledge that he smoked pot, although he informed me on the way down here, Mom, I smoked it a lot earlier than that. <laughs> Little did I know. But anyway, that was my first knowledge that he had smoked pot. And um, he entered his sophomore year and he had a car and he had a job. But in Kansas City, in our school district, sophomore year was your first year in high school. So he really wanted to have a name for himself. So why not be the kid in high school that can rule the best joint? That was his claim to fame. So as the fall progressed, um, Garrison became more irritable and moody. He would have fits of rage at home. And I couldn't, ex I couldn't understand it. I couldn't explain it. It just was odd. And his behavior changed and his grades dropped. And all these things were different about him. And in Christmas time in 2002, he um, got into a confrontation with me. And he decided to move to his dad's house. His dad and I are divorced. This was devastating for me. All of a sudden, all these behavior changes um, that I just couldn't explain. And so he moved out and lived at his dad's house. And within five months, he'd been arrested. He was on probation. He was kicked out of school, all due to his increased dr drug use. So as a mom, I was pleading with God. I was praying. I was begging with God. Why? Why is this happening? Why aren't you helping? Where are you, God? I can't hear you. Well, I think all of us know that there are reasons that God doesn't speak to us. There are reasons when we can't hear his voice. And for me, part of the reason I couldn't hear God's voice was because I had some sin that I needed to take care of for myself. I had to face my own addiction of, um, to alcohol. And so once I um, confessed my own addiction and faced my own addiction and accepted Christ's forgiveness for that, all of a sudden I could begin to hear God's voice for myself. And wow, that was pretty amazing. So, thank you. Um, so once, once God started speaking to me, um, one of God's first messages to me was, Carol, let go. You're not in control. Um, I need to handle this, and you need to let go, and you need to truly let go and turn it over to me. And so that was the first thing that I did, was to let go and let God. That was pretty powerful. So in April of 2004, Garrison moved back. It was great. I was so happy to have him home. Um, he celebrated four months of sobriety that summer, stayed clean for the whole summer, and I was so proud. Um, he and I were in recovery together. It was great. Um, that fall, he went back to school as a senior in the same high school, Olathe East. And he was doing pretty well. And then all of a sudden, God spoke my name again. Garrison was using, and I knew it. I heard God's voice. And so I um, did what a good mother would do and took him up to the hospital for what I call the pop quiz drug test. And I confronted Garrison with the results. And Garrison chose to run away from home. That week was agonizing, and it would have been worse, except for I had the faith in God that God was going to take care of Garrison, and I now know that God was strengthening me through that week for some tough decisions I was going to be making in just a very few months. So when Garrison came home, we laid down the law, told him if he ran away again, he was not coming home for at least six months, so that he knew that running away was not an option, and, living, and if he did, he was not going to live at home. So we put him back in a, a local rehab um, just to basically buy us some time. And the, there was an angel up there working that started preparing us that Garrison really needed residential rehab. But I wasn't really ready to accept that yet, and I didn't have a good answer. Um, so as the fall progressed, 
we could see Garrison physically wasting away. He became pale. He um, became more and more moody, irritable. He wouldn't eat when he was home. All he wanted to do was sleep. And then when he was awake, oh man, we really couldn't stand to be with him. He was irritable, um, just horrible to be with. Um, again, no grades were failing, skipping school, the whole ball of wax. So again, pop quiz time. I really had to know what was going on. Um, this time, the drugs were cocaine. He'd increased his use to cocaine. I couldn't believe it. My baby was using cocaine. Oh, I was devastated and scared and didn't know what to do. I blamed myself. If I hadn't drank, this would have happened. Um, you, know, you know, I looked to myself, but then my husband and I said, this is crazy. We need to turn to God. We've got to turn to God. And of course, God provided answers um, through uh, the leader of the Shawnee Mission um, drug, drug program for the adolescents, she provided several alternatives for residential rehab, of course one of them being Teen Challenge. So we came down and we toured both the Oklahoma location, which was just starting up at the time, and Arkansas. Um, when we got here, um, Jennifer greeted us, of course, with her sweet smile. I think she knew we were petrified. <laughs> and um, I remember Darren spending hours with us. He took the time out of his day to explain to us everything that would happen, um, what, what the boys would do all day. We actually got to meet some of the boys. And I thought, oh my gosh, my garrison will never be like that. You know, there's no way he can turn around to that extent. But if he, if he was even half that good, it would be worse than anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. <laughs> so my husband and I knew we had found the answer to our prayer, but we had one more roadblock. Garrison had to be willing to come before he would be accepted. So we prayed like crazy all the way home. And fortunately, God did that work as well. So um, I, um, the, the people at Teen Challenge um, have just been a godsend. We have a a church we point, or a phrase we point in our church called Jesus with skin on, people that behave as Christ on this earth. And that is how I would explain everyone at Team Challenge. They are all Jesus with skin on. I don't, I just, I don't know what to say other than that. Um, um, I was even telling our table today, Garrison um, celebrated his 18th birthday here. It's pretty tough for a mom not to be with her baby on his 18th birthday. But the cook, I don't know her name. Is she here? Oh, you are so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. 